Hello and welcome, I am Aruma. Thank you for joining me. This is a opening guide to how to survive as the Timrids in patch 1.25 of Europa Universalis 4. Let's go ahead and dive right in. We are going to try out this country over here in this area of the world. So the Timrids are a interesting start. They have, similar to like Mus Muscovy, they have a lot of subjects at the very beginning of the game that are very strong. And we have this, uh, this guy named Shah Rukh, supreme ruler of the Timurid Empire, the son of the great conqueror Timur. Uh, so yeah. Much has changed since the death of the Great Emir, however, and his empire that once stretched from Anatolia to Delhi. So, we have a few interesting, unique challenges um, moving into this campaign. We've got subjects who are very strong and very, very close to disloyalty. But more importantly, we have a very big modifier on here that is temporary. Empire of Shah Rukh. Negative 50% liberty desire. When our current ruler dies, all of the subjects are going to become extremely disloyal and the empire is probably going to break up. But we want to avoid that because if we can survive 10 years or keep them loyal for 10 years, we can integrate them and we have cores on basically every single province that this guy owns, all of Khorasan's cores, all of Fars' cores, almost all of Afghanistan's cores, which means to integrate all of these subjects is going to cost us 30 diplo points. That's the only province, well, not counting Sistan. Sistan we have no cores on, so we'd have to pay for him as well. So that's going to be another 6, 3, 5... So that would be 9, 14, 24, 24 times 3. It's like 75 dip. We can integrate all five subjects for about 75 diplo points. Pretty good, right? <laughs> so let's go ahead and talk about how we can survive this, this situation. We have to get our subjects loyal. We're going to do that through opinion, diplomatic reputation, other, other event modifiers if we can get them, and also by trying to keep them in a position where they just can't break free by having uh, either no money, no army, or they're stuck at war and they have to help us. So, first things first is we're gonna move our merchant from Hormuz to Persia because game is bad and game doesn't assign merchants in a good location. So we're gonna do that. Now, no matter what you do, every time you load up as the Timurids, you will always have a diplomatic reputation plus one advisor. He's half price. You always know that it's a scripted starting advisor if there is a half price advisor in your starting pool. Otherwise, they will be full price. So. You should pretty much always take the Diplorup guy. He does cost an extra ducat a month, but it's important that we have this diplomatic reputation because every diplomatic reputation is 3% liberty desire. Right now we have trust towards Timurid is negative 10, Timurid, dip, Timurid diplomatic reputation negative 6. If you look at our diplomatic reputation, we have 2. We are going to rival. Interesting, in this start, it looks like Ajam has. He's not a valid rival. I've loaded up the Timurids a couple times, and actually, every other time, Ajam has been a valid rival. Weird. It's weird that it's not this time. First things first we're going to do, though, is with our diplomats, we want to start improving relations. If you want to min-max, you want to improve relations with the person that's the closest to zero, because then you have the most improved relations over time. And we do want to try to get as much as possible. Let's go ahead and improve relations with you. It's tempting to open up with a royal marriage, because royal marriages do give you 25 opinion. But when you do that, you're actually slowing down your ability to max out improved relations. We're just going to improve for one month, and then we'll deal with uh, royal marriages after they're loyal. In fact, they'll send the requests to us, so we can do it that way. Now, we have this special government type called ICTA, which allows us to do these clicks. Efficient tax farming, land acquisition, and lenient taxation. It's tempting to click efficient tax farmation... Uh, efficient tax farming because of that 530 bonus ducats and extra tax modifier, I still strongly recommend you that you take lenient taxation because Shah, Shah Rukh is 67. He's probably not going to make it to 77. So we've, we've, he's going to help us out in stabilizing the very beginning, but we're going to need some help getting us through the full 10 years to integration period so we can actually do the integration. So let's take lenient taxation. That negative 15 will help out. It also brings most of the subjects down to a point where they are loyal right this second. We tell every subject to be focused on aggression, um, which is good. And then I would probably, with the trends Oceana, I would placate him just to get him below 50. Make sure that everybody is paying us taxes right away in the very first month. <clears throat> we need that income. Gathering Storm. Here's a pop-up that tells us that as long as our guy lives, we have that negative 50%. They just want to make sure that you know that. Austria has done some alliances. We're not going to really get involved with anything else in the world because we're too focused on our own country. So now that we have that, we can actually hire a couple other advisors. Um, another scripted advisor here, stability cost modifier guy. 
Uh, we could we could go for him, or we could just go for a level 1 guy to save some cash. We'll take the higher price guy. And again, these guys are not scripted because they're full price. Land Force Summit guy sounds great, actually, because he's going to inflate our numbers. Next thing we want to do is bloat our own troop count. We want to make sure that our subjects know who's boss. So we're going to go all the way up to our Force Summit in pure infantry. We're still making a little bit of cash. We can go down on Army Maintenance just a little bit. Keep us above a bad number. Corruption at this point in the game is not important at all. We have some clicks we can do. Adopt the title of Khalifa. Uh, denounce sect practices and enforce religious unity. We don't care about that or that. Now we can ravel the Jam. There we go. We'll also ravel the Mamluks. And we are ready to go. Now I'm not going to do any estate clicks. This is another thing that you could do to just help Stabilize your country, get an extra 150 military points or 100 military points. But um, I I don't really think that we need to do this right now. It's a thing that is possible. But um, yeah, we'll just take like a little bit of stuff. Bare minimum. Um, you could do this, move towards legalism, try to build up your uh, administrative points so you can buy some stability, get your prosperity building up, that kind of thing. But for now, we're just going to ignore that for the most part. And now we can actually click a button already. One of the first missions for the Timurids is to get any subject's liberty desire below 40%, which gives us military power and prestige. We can then use that prestige to placate again. Soon. So. All we really want to do now is get through to December, <clears throat> and at this point in the game, if your ruler dies, I would just restart. Honestly, you need to make it to December 11th. If you can't make it till to December 11th, then the game just does not want you to win, and you need to try over again. It is possible to survive, but it's just way harder and frankly not fun, so I wouldn't do that. All right, we're gonna move that army that way. Let's uh, go back to full maintenance again. I saved like a grand total of like a half ducat there, but whatever. All right, now before we do anything else, on December 11th, we're gonna immediately declare a war. The primary reason for this is that we need to prevent our subjects from being able to declare war on us if they do ally with each other. And if for whatever reason they're disloyal for even a month and they ally each other, it's incredibly difficult to get them to break up that alliance chain later on. And then if they're disloyal, they'll also try to seek outside support. Mamluks might try to support this guy's independence, for example, if he has rivaled us, which he has. You don't want that because then they will have outside support and never become loyal again. So by being at war, they can't seek support. They can't do any of that stuff. And that's what we want. I'm going to declare over Isfahan because it's one of our cores. We have cores on Ajam as well. Isfahan is a coastal, it's a center of trade in the node that we collect from, and I just know that it's a good province to go for because I want my subjects to help me siege it so we get a bunch of trade income. So Isfahan, I don't care who he's allied at this point, we always declare. And now, now that we are at war, and I do think this is a very key part of the strategy, you want to now enable scootage on every subject. That doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? <laughs> right? Well, actually it does. We want our subjects to be in the war, we also want our subjects to have no money and to reduce the sizes of their army. Now, by enabling scootage, we've just increased the amount of money they owe us a tremendous amount, and most of them are going to start losing money on a monthly basis once they have trained up to their force limit. Once they are at peace, once this war is over, they will demilitarize, reducing the overall liberal desire of every single subject. And in the meantime, we are gaining troops very soon. So, let's let it play out for a little bit. Now, another key part to this strategy that I'm going to use is we are going to do absolutely no work. We're going to protect our land, we're going to put our troops on this border so that no one comes near us, but we're going to require our subjects to do all of the work in this war. Why is that? Well, it's pretty simple. Relative strength of the alliance is based on manpower and current troops. If I do work, I am reducing my relative power of all vassals to Timurids by reducing my manpower or active army. By having them do the work, they are losing troops and they are weakening themselves, again swinging it in our favor. We can already do another click. We've built to our force limit. Yay! Morale of armies and land maintenance goes down. So when I say we are going to do no work, I don't mean that we're not going to get loot. Obviously we want loot, but we do not want to actually lose any troops in any battles. And we're going to require them to just do all the sieges for us. It could be um, either way, aggressive or siege focus, I think, can work. Siege focus, they'll focus on obviously trying to knock down individual provinces. Uh, aggressive, they'll try to find battles. Uh, we do want them to find battles and sieges, though. You can mix it up, but it's up to you. I'll leave them on aggressive for now. Now, I did miss a few months of improved relations or other things there. While you're at war, they usually won't send royal marriage requests. But once they get below 20% liberty desire, we're going to, in addition now, start diverting trade. 
So now, not only have we taken a bunch of their cash by enabling scootage, we're now also going to say you can't have any trade power. So you take a guy like, say, Fars, who is currently making one and a half ducats from trade, now he's suddenly going to have no trade income, and he's going to be negative on income. This guy, already losing three ducats a month, we haven't even demanded his trade value yet, he's going to be down to negative five soon, which means he will have to reduce the size of his armies. Next up, we're going to take some of the cash that we're getting from our subjects, and we're going to do great power influence with these guys. Great power influence on a subject <clears throat> does give them more monarch points, but more importantly, it gives us five trust. Trust is also uh, negative liberty desire, and it's the only way that you get trust with a subject that I'm aware of. So for the cheaper guys, we'll do that first. And then for the guys that we don't have the money for yet, like this guy, we'll go ahead and just start improving relations there. And uh, Fars as well. I would actually consider firing uh, the Cav, personally. <clears throat> because they, they just cost too much money, and for relative strength of the Alliance, they don't actually do anything any different than an infantry. But we have no manpower at the moment, so we're not going to do that. Because that would just temporarily reduce relative strength of the Alliance, and that's no good. So we're at, cur at war currently with Yas and Biapas and Luristan, and just a bunch of people that are actually going to be pretty darn easy to beat. Supply is pretty low here, only 10. Let's put, uh, let's put our leader there. Having him appointed to an army does not actually make him more likely to die. It's only when he is leading a siege or otherwise in a battle that the increased chance for death can happen. We'll start sending off our royal marriage requests now. Since they're not going to do it while we're at war. Again, just to reiterate, we could speed up the rate that we improve relations if we um, did not do this. If we just continue to allow the improved relations over time to work, we would get, get maxed out on relations a little bit faster. But that's okay. We also now have access to inviting a scholar. For 50 admin points, we can invite a scholar and get an extra merchant. I would highly recommend that you do this. This extra merchant's going to give us more trade power in our Persia node by getting an extra transfer bonus. We'll transfer over here from Kashmir. Take some money from the Indians. Actually, I'm going to leave a 12 stack on this side just so that we have some protection from the south. I'm going to tell the guy with the largest army, Transoceana, to go to this area and hope that he will go and path through these armies down here in the south. Anytime your subjects are being occupied is actually, in some ways, a good thing because now they have less income, which is going to, over time, affect their relative strength. Liberty Desire is getting kind of high again, but that's only because I'm demanding trade power from most of them. We can almost get it from this guy. We haven't done, um, I think with two countries, we still haven't done the... Influence Nation. We need 24 ducats to influence Fars, and we need 89 ducats to influence Transoceana. We'll keep improving with him. Let's find the person with the lowest opinion that's not that guy and improve with the other two. Okay, so we're improving with three of our subjects. Castile has a union over Navarra. Succession War. Cool, good for Aragon and Castile. Have fun, guys. The siege is beginning. If we have a Siege Pip leader, I would I would commit him. Our subject does not have one there. With five minions, it's pretty likely that you're going to have a good good uh, number of generals around, some of which will be very good. Even if we take some damage down here in the south, it's far more important that we just avoid all battles. I'm going to be repeating myself a lot, just so that you can understand, like, what it is that I'm trying to accomplish. I'm, I'm not trying to win this war. If anything, we want this war to drag on as long as possible so that we can milk it, get our, our uh, liberty desire down. Now at this point, let's just say that right this second, we've been playing for 
Not even a year. If our guy died, I could disable Divert Trade on Corazon, and then that 50% increased Liberty Desire that we would have from losing Empire of Shah Rukh, we would still have at least one subject who's loyal. So we're very close to having stabilized. At least with that subject. Still more provinces up here we can occupy. Laristan occupied by Jam. Personal Union over Lithuania. Okay, they are ignoring the battle so far. I'm going to tell them to be... Defensive? Possibly. I'm not sure which one of these things we need to use to get these jerks to actually do the siege, but... Or to, sorry, to do the battles. They're not going after this. Fars is still ignoring the fact that he's being sieged. All right, come on, my, come on, my minions. Siege that guy out. Siege this stuff out and then go fight. Go forth, swarm. Stop making me suffer attrition, please. Get on my lands, bros. Just in case, we'll park an extra four stack here. Um, maybe not quite that many. Supply's pretty low. They're suffering 5% attrition on their side. That's good. Okay, defensive is helping them to actually unoccupy that land. But it's not getting them to fight the actual army. It's trying to remain. It's like France does not want to go to war with England. Now, we're gonna... There's a little cheesy tactic you can use here. We're about to lose control of this. Um... If you transfer to a subject, then transfer it back to yourself, then you reset the timer on Zone of Control Reset, so that's good. Okay, they're going for a fight with us, we don't want that, let's threaten to send our whole army there. They don't want to actually do that. Or they do. 29th, 3rd, 2nd, 2nd. Okay, we will just leave, in that case. Looks like he might be coming for his capital. And honestly, it's not important that we win this siege quickly, so even though we've got siege status here, if I had to choose between fighting a heads-up battle, my army versus the enemy's armies, while my subjects are completely scot-free, I'm just going to abandon the siege and run away. Again, I don't care if this whole if this war takes 10 years, but I get through it without suffering a single combat casualty, then we're going to be able to integrate all of our subjects on time, which is way, way more important than winning this war early. Again, we've enabled scootage on every subject, so winning the war early is actually a bad thing. Like, it's just it's just bad. So we're gonna retreat to the mountains. We're gonna stay as safe as we can. The defensive is not actually gonna work. I need you guys to be aggressive. Be aggressive. Or, you know what? Why don't we try no focus? Maybe they'll be smarter with no focus. Very close to being able to do the thing with Transoceana, where we can turn on the Divert Trade. We still have... He's the only one we haven't diverted trade on. We have 72 ducats. I'm going to save up enough that we can do our... Uh, we can do the Great Power Influence with him. We are sitting on the War Goal. They might come for this fight, but we're in the mountains. And we can always Scorch it. Scorching will give us tons of time to move away. Bouncing these guys around, trying to find a good spot for maneuver. 11 supply, 11 supply. Guess we'll go even further back into that mountain. Alright, so, we are at 1921 manpower. Do we have any professionalism? We do not start the game with professionalism, so we can't uh, slack in standards. But that would be a good thing that we could do. I actually think I will do a little bit of clicking with the emirs. I want to get my... Um, I want to raise some nice levy from them right now. So, rather than get the military points, uh, the breakpoint for good clicks, we're going to get 3,000 manpower if we click it right now, but if we can get them up to 70% 75% influence, the click gets stronger. 
Do we have any provinces with autonomy? Nope. Okay. Let's just find a province that gets up to 75%. Let's see, we got a 112. That'd be a good province for them. Puts them at 74.9. 4.2. Let's see if there's one that's just slightly above 4.2. 5.2, but I don't like the spread. 221. We got 222. That's okay, but I like that trade good. I guess we'll give them this and this. We'll give them a little bit extra. Put them at 79%. Now that click goes up from 3,000 something to 4,000. It's minor, but let's take it. We can now make them disloyal, take the military points, probably still worthwhile. Even if they're disloyal, manpower cover speed goes down. Uh, we will do that. Again, I don't really want to take the time to do all of these clicks, but it's a thing that you could spend time on. The manpower one just makes a direct impact on us right now. Alright, one of our subjects is at 200. I'm going to pull him back from that, and we'll work on the next subject that's got less enthusiasm or less uh, liberty desire. This army is heading to Tabas. <clears throat> and again, just to reiterate, we're playing to stall. We're playing not to win, but to collect loot, be at war, keep our subjects ro um, loyal, and wait until we can integrate. Alright, so with no focus, they are heading down here to try to maybe knock this guy out. That's fine. This is this is good. They're actually going to have a battle for the first time. Well, that might be the second battle. Yeah, so they are doing battles now. I like that. We're getting occupied a little bit. We'll just come in from behind and unoccupy it. Let's put this guy here and the maneuver guy here so that we can combine the armies again. Get them near each other. Alright, looks like we have enough money now that we can do Great Power inf Influence. Influence Nation, 90 ducats. That's fine. He is now at 13. And we will now divert trade with him. Next up after that, I would start trying to add in Embargo Rivals. But you've got to remember that if your ruler dies, you have to go in here and immediately turn these off. Turn off Embargo um, Rivals and Divert Trade. Don't worry about Scootage, because that'll actually raise their Liberty Desire. But the other two you can turn off to save 35%. The moment they die, that's when we do it. I'm going to ignore this attrition for now. I just want these armies to be adjacent to each other. I'm going to apply some more pressure to some of these other provinces, just so that we have them occupied. Maybe we can con convince them to come back this way. I like that they're putting pressure on Transoceana instead of us. They threaten to do damage to our territory. We'll just position the army near it, get ready to retake the land, um, but again, avoid all fights. Okay. Afghanistan is committing to a siege. I'm going to go ahead and tell him that he's a good boy. Tell him that, yes, that's what you should do, and then just confirm that I want him to stay there. Um, hopefully he'll continue to sit there if I put him on siege focus. He'll just sit there and take that province down for us. Okay, the next subject that has the lowest opinion is Afghanistan. Alright, let's take a look at how we've affected the subjects. So right now, Transoceana is losing three ducats a month. His income is still showing the trade, because it's only... It hasn't affected him yet. Trade is still at 2.83. Uh, why do you still have trade power, sir? Right, that's odd. It sometimes takes two months for the trade transfer to update. I want to confirm that I, I did ask you for your trade value. I definitely did, so let's let another month go. I don't know why it does that, but sometimes it does take more time. There it goes. So two months later, now his income has dropped. He's lost all trade income. His expenses are 12.6 ducats a month. He's losing 5.6. Keep the war going for another 10 months, and all of a sudden he's going to be in debt. Why is him being in debt a good thing? Every time you placate a subject, you lower their liberty desire by 5%. So, sorry, not placate. Every time you pay off every individual loan they have, it's worth 5 liberty desire. It's better on the smaller subjects because their loans are smaller, so you get more liberty desire per money. But worst case scenario, now we can take all the money they're giving us and then use that money to lower liberty desire, even though it's just money they should have had anyway. 
And then the other thing that you can do, uh, assuming you have all the right DLC, is that you can you can develop your subject's lands. If you click the development button in their territory, it will lower Liberty Desire by 5% per click. That, I think, is a last-ditch effort. Although the lands are your cores, which is, is really good because it doesn't matter, you're not going to have to pay extra Diplo points to integrate the higher developed land, just be aware that it can backfire. If you make your subjects too strong because you've developed them too much, you're kind of kicking the kicking the can down the street, if uh, you're familiar with that reference. So let's move these armies forward and go back to looting, it looks like now, because they are not threatening us much. Well, actually, I don't like those provinces being occupied. Let's go over that way. Okay, so I've only played for about two years, but we've taken their subjects down to the point where they are loyal while they have plus 35% increased Liberty Desire. If they, if we were to die right this second, they would all jump up to Disloyal, but we've already got them in the war. They're already contributing to this, this war and helping us to win it, and even though they'll bring their armies home, just sit in the war. Just sit in the war until you can continue to uh, build up your armies, and even if they are disloyal right now, they can't rebel against you, and they are stuck in this position where they're going to continue to lose money over time. So then, you just wait until you can buy off their loans, slowly get them all loyal, and eventually, 10 years will have passed, you can click the Integrate button. Now, at this point, we could either continue it, um, we're already on, up on a 26 minutes at this point, so um, I don't think I'm going to continue this too much longer. We're about to actually take the enemy's capital. And this is what I want to see. Transocean is going for a battle. I am not going to reinforce him. Good luck, buddy. So he just lost a lot of troops. And he's going to continue to get weaker and weaker. He's not going to be able to reinforce them for very long. And we should be in a pretty good spot. So, anyway, that would be basically how it would open up as the as the Timurids. Um, let me know what your thoughts are down below. I, I fully believe that this this start and this example will work, will succeed. We're about to knock out a secondary participant. We have everything we need. Again, key thing, don't end this war until you are 100% confident your subjects are going to be loyal because we did enable scootage. So I would personally just try to stall this for all 10 years. Even if we get a little bit of call for peace toward the end, I would rather do that and then full integrate everybody than risk having them become disloyal. So, all right, let me know what your thoughts are down below. I'll see you guys in the next episode or the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you soon.